Welcome to St Moors, a picturesque coastal town near Falmouth in the UK where history and adrenaline collide on the open waters. Today we bring you a thrilling display of Pilot Cutter's yacht racing, a spectacle that showcases the fascinating and fast vessels of a bygone era. wind's died right away now. It's uh, six o'clock. We're uh, surrounded from early in, in the day with pilot cutters. We've got three this side and another three here, two there and a grey one over there and then this is an old pilot cutter style boat as well. Pilot cutters hold a significant place in maritime history in the UK. These remarkable vessels were originally developed during the 18th and 19th centuries for pilotage duty, guiding large ships safely into harbours and manoeuvring through treacherous coastal waters. Their speed and agility were vital in ensuring the safe passage of such valuable cargo. The clean lines of the deck, a very upright, proud bow, uh, a counter, short counter, and uh, then a very deep keel, which you can't see with the boat sailing. A rudder, small rudder at the end of a long keel, and there's the water line. The boat has um, a shorter mast and then an upper mast which is attached using rigging systems. Main boom and a bowsprit attached by bobstay. So the boat has what's called a gaff, so it's a second spar above the boom which is hoisted to this sort of height and attached to that is the main sail pulled up to there and then above that is a top mast and another sail a top sail top mainsail is added in there it has no spars on it it's, it's attached at the three corners and on the bow is a jib which generally doesn't go beyond the mast on the bowsprit in lighter winds or when they're adding extra speed is another jib which is used probably more likely downwind under the water all this area stops the boat going sideways under the pressure of the wind the evolution of pilot cutters saw them transform from working fishing vessels into recreational craft as they are used today capturing the hearts of sailing enthusiasts worldwide. Today, they evoke a sense of nostalgia, embodying the elegance and raw power of a bygone era. So as you can hear, the wind's up. We're getting ready to go racing. As we witness these pilot cutters racing in St Moors, their sails billowing with the force of the wind, it's clear that the thrill of competition endures. These vessels, designed to combine speed and stability, exhibit remarkable performance even by modern standards. The crews begin preparation for the race by carefully hoisting the sails and making sure they're attached and set correctly. Hoisting the mainsail is no menial task, it uh, required a lot of effort. These boats would have been sailed by just two people, plus the pilot who left the vessel uh, to guide the other incoming vessel ashore. So one man 
and an apprentice. In later years these vessels would have had small motors but originally they would have just been sailed on the power of the sails and two people to pull these sails up and set everything to get off an anchor is quite a quite a task. Yeah, I mean, topsail's flapping about a bit. It needs to get that up a bit more. There it goes, nearly there now. Quite a big area of sail. I think he's just about there. Competition for getting pilots out to boats wasn't just under sail, and they did use gigs to row them out. And uh, nowadays another sport, gig rowing, comes from the, that origin. Gaff rigged, pilot cutter shape, uh, more modern and probably built as a gentleman's yacht with a raked round bow and truncated stern. The shapes of the sterns are quite interesting. Some are, have a transom on them. The original ones we think were uh, shaped like a lute, we call lute sterns, and they were the forerunners to what's called a counter stern. Once the mainsail is set, then the topsail is hoisted from the top of the topsail mast, and the three corners of it are tightened until it forms a complete mainsail. Tricks of the trade of the pilot cutters included uh, dowsing their white lights they were supposed to show to uh, fool their uh, opposition. Looks like he's taking it all up. Yeah, bit of exercise this morning. Once the mainsail's up, then uh, the anchor has to come up. This we think is Cornubia sailing past under motor. Well, you don't often see four Bristol pilot cutters in a row like that. A nostalgic sight indeed. The pilot cutter designs developed in the Bristol Channel and out in the Scilly Isles. The pilot cutters were eventually superseded by steam powered vessels, which were faster and more efficient. Uh, and could sail um, directly into the wind, wind, which the pilot cutters obviously couldn't. Of the pilot cutters, there are 18 originals which we believe have survived, um, and of those, we think we saw uh, about five or six of those vessels racing in St. Moors. They included Cornubia, Dolphin, Kindly Light, Mascot, and Olga and another vessel called Polly Agatha, which we think is an original as well. One of the challenges in St Moors is getting your anchor to hold well. There's lots of weed on the, on the bed of the sea and uh, getting a good grip requires uh, quite a bit of skill. I think Piggy's almost ready to look away. The vessels are constructed on oak frames uh, with an elm keel, uh, pitch pine keel, an inner keel, and the interiors were very basic uh, with basic pitch pine. Yeah. 
feeling rather uh, lonely here in the bay with uh, all the cutters out uh, getting ready for the start, tuning their sails and getting uh, a handle on the wind direction. Speed was profit, so minimum cruise. Uh, you had a, a, a skipper who would have been called a Westerman and an apprentice. So two of them plus the pilot. And in the summer months they would have used cotton sails uh, and in the winter they would have used flax sails. The design of the boats included some quite novel in innovations which are now used on racing yachts, including roller reefing of the headsails and the mainsail, uh, which was rolled to reduce the size of the mainsail to, in effect, reef the sail. The traditional boats, uh, but certainly not a traditional crew, there's nine people on board there. Following being close to the wind, this vessel is tacking, so he pushes his nose through the wind and then pulls the sails in on the opposite side. You can see the crew working to get that jib under control, and now it's set and she's off. Look how quickly she accelerates. Much more modern yacht intrudes into the starting procedure. Be interesting to see the differences between a modern yacht hull shape and um, one of the classics. Modern yachts have a similar hull shape above, but uh, the stern tends to have a slant the opposite way and the keel arrangement much different. So usually a keel like this, quite thin, thin keel with a heavy lead or um, steel bulb on the bottom. Mast very high, almost a combination of mast and a top a topsail mast, top yard. The mainsail quite tall and then one jib or called a genoa nowadays which quite often overlaps the the mast area and um, in terms of water length rudder a single rudder on its own, not, not attached to the keel, and on the bow, a bowsprit, but only used for downwind sailing with a balloon like sail called a spinnaker or a code uh, jib. And this is the underside of our cruiser, not exactly a racer, but similar shape. So what stops these graceful craft tipping over at the pressure of the wind? The cutters have an hourglass shape with a, a heavy uh, keel, lead usually, and then in the bilges they would have had probably concrete or something solid like that, and then maybe additional ballast might have been lead bars or more often lead shot or um, steel steel bars. There would have been a floor and then the hold of the original boats would of course have been for fish. So um, you had your fish in your hold and if you caught more fish um, then you needed to have a little bit more water line to carry the load. So here yeah, we have another pile of fish and of course the vessel would have gone deeper in the water and supported that. So modern yachts have much more of a dish shape um, and then the fin keel with the bulb on the bottom and the things helping the boat stay upright from the pressure of the wind in the sails would have been the lead keel. So 
So sitting with no wind, she would have been upright. And then once she's healed over under the pressure of the wind, that sort of shape and the keel would have been at an angle. The weight of the keel attempts to bring the boat upright again. And of course the additional of uh, the poor old crewman on the weather rail with his feet over the side hanging on for grim death um, is another source of weight that keeps a modern racing boat upright. start of the race approaches, excitement builds. The skillful helmsmanship and teamwork required to harness the power of wind and sea becomes evident. It's a testament to the enduring appeal of these magnificent vessels and the enduring spirit of adventure they represent. are moving at speed through the anchorage and very skillful helmsmanship required to do this. So the manoeuvre he's about to undertake here is called a jibe. So the mainsail, the back of the boat is going through the wind and the sail is pulled in tight to stop it crashing across and as the wind comes across the back of the boat the mainsail swings across, everybody ducks to make sure you don't get your head hit with that piece of timber and the boat then pulls in sails and quickly accelerates. You can see how fast the boat is. She's now up to speed and you can see how fast she is and that bow wave really creating a lot of foam. And a tip of the hat to bygone eras, the Austin Healy themed uh, motor cruiser intervenes in the start and follows them out. The cutters started the races in uh, groups. Some of these would have been uh, original vessels and others would have been re reproductions. Second class uh, starting here, we think these are the original boats. So we're on a bit of a mission. We've watched the uh, working boats, the pilot cutters, take off on their race. We're just going to go up the top of the hill and see if we can see the start of the next race. So we brought the dinghy over to place. I'm going to walk around the big house, which is up the top here. I'll show you that in a minute. And. Uh, and see if we can see the race from the top of the hill. The history of uh, these pilot cutter reviews goes back to when the boats were not in the Western Approaches seeking for work and they would race and parade the boats in various ports. Ilfra Croom was particularly popular. Um, they carried a small punt on board that they would row over to the vessel they were piloting and um, often they had a drop down in the, in the side of the boat in the gunnel to allow that to happen. And a sight not seen very often, so many pilot cutters in a row in St Moore's. Fantastic sight. 
having reviewed uh, the pilot cutters from on top of the hill now he takes us skillfully back across the Bay of St Moors to review the cutters in the bay took our own review of the pilot cutters in St Moors. Um, enthusiasm for racing these is, seems to be infectious. Many are drawn to the rich history behind these vessels, the craftsmanship involved in their construction and among the camaraderie among the sailing community. A close up of the cutters reveals all the rigging and uh, all the little features such as this one has a jolly boat on board to get them off and on. Uh, sails being checked and tuned for the afternoon's race. Setting some of the jib sails requires a little bit of bravery by the crew to walk out on the bowsprit and hank on the sails ready for the race. So she has a hank on uh, big jib. Yes, that's and the one that goes at an angle there, which is actually already rolled. It's obviously, obviously allowed by the class rules as a roller reefed sail modern fabrics that they're all using. So, back in its day the pilot cutters would have been the head of the, the, at the lead of technology in terms of getting every knot of speed out of their boats. So it's nice to see the crews uh, and skippers and owners keeping that up making sure that uh, they get every knot of speed they can. That might be what's called a Yankee not absolutely sure about check out the sail names I think as the cutters move away to start their second race at St Moors we're reminded of the rich heritage and sheer beauty of pilot cutter yachts these vessels once the workhorses of the sea continue to capture our imagination serving as a testament to human ingenuity and our enduring connection to the ocean <laughs>